what are the x-intercepts of that equation when it's in uh, vertex form? So just like before, draw myself a graph. Right there, graph. If I have a point or points on the x-axis, the y-coordinates are always zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in zero for y. And then a times of this business squared plus that business k. How do I solve that? Well, um, just like we solved quadratic equations after we had completed the square, that's kind of what this thing looks like. Let's solve it like that. Let's get the k over here to the left side. Let's subtract it, negative k. a times x minus h squared. Um, should I expand this thing out? No. Should I uh, distribute this a through? Hmm. I should just get rid of it by dividing both sides by it. That's what I should do. So I have negative k over a equals x minus h squared. How do I get rid of a square? I take the square root. Take square root of both sides. And remember, huh, when I take the square root as part of solving an equation, how many answers should I get? a plus and a minus. So this is plus minus square root of negative k over a equals x minus h. And finally, let's just take that h over there. All right, I'm going to do something a little unconventional. Switch the sides on you. So I have h, no, 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 x first because I, I like it that way. So I would have added the h over, so it's going to be positive plus or minus the square root of negative k over a. Right? Again, this is not a formula you have to memorize. Just, you know, demonstrating some algebra skills. And, uh, but this is the process that you would go through when it did have numbers. Uh, yeah, something. Anyway, so uh, you would plug 0 in for y. Get your k over, divide by the a, take square root of both sides, and there would be your two x-intercepts. You'd do it the same way, but you would just have numbers in there instead of letters. Ooh, so now let's graph some of these quadratic functions when they're in vertex form. Really easy, because it already gives you the vertex, right? So you'd know where that point is. And then we can just use SRT transformations on it. Scaling happens from taking the a coordinate or the a value and multiplying it times the y coordinates of the parent function. So you have to be really good at doing your parent function like without having to think about it much. You just blah, 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 I got it, my parent function. Reflecting, reflecting across the x axis, it only happens if your a value is negative. And then translating, translating left, right for h, up, down for k. The x value, it's always in the opposite direction of that sign. Remember, it lies to you, so this one's a liar. And this one tells the truth. So, for example, if this is x minus 5, I don't move left 5, I move right 5. If this was minus 5 out here, that does mean that I move down 5. Okay, keep that straight. So our first graphing one is y equals a half times x minus 3 squared minus 5. It's in vertex form, as you could probably notice. So let's go ahead and write down the vertex. Why not? Vertex. It's at not negative 3, but 3, negative 5. Higher. You could plot that if you wanted to. But let's go ahead and do our S, our R, and our T. Am I scaling it? Why, certainly, we're scaling it by a half. Half of all of the y-coordinates on the parent function. Are we reflecting it? No. Why am I not reflecting it? Because it's one-half positive, it's not negative a half. And then translating, finally, we are moving this, right, 3, and down 5 point by point on the parent function, so get that parent function graph like so. So uh, remember, parent function goes like this. You start with 0, 0 squared is 0. 
go over here to 1. 1 squared is 1, and then you can reflect it across the axis of symmetry, which is the y-axis in this case. 2, 2 squared is 4, reflect that across. 3, 3 squared is 9, reflect that across. If you wanted to do more, I don't have enough room here, you do 4, and 4 squared would be 16, someplace up there, just saying. And then you could put some dotted line or dashed line in between those. And that's usually enough to graph one of these things when it's in vertex form. So point by point, let's do our SRT transformation, starting with the origin. Origin and y-coordinate is 0. Take half of it, still 0. Don't have to reflect it. Now move it right three. One, two, three, and down. One, two, three, four, five. It should be right there. Well, certainly that's where it's at. Magic. And look, that's the same thing as the vertex. Let's move on to this point. So it's at one, one. The y-coordinate is one. Take half of it. Half. No. I'm, I'm going to not do that. You could do it if you want to. Let's actually move on to this one. It's, sen it's more sensible. Why is it more sensible? Think about it for a second. This one's the coordinates at 2, 4. The reason why it's more sensible is because the y coordinate being 4, it's even. I take half of it. I'm at 2. Now I don't have to worry about halvesies. So I'm at 2. Move it right 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It should be right there. There we go. And uh, I, I don't have to do the process on, on this point here. I could just reflect this across the axis of symmetry. It's two away from the center, so go two more. It should be right there. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so uh, I'd run into the same problem if I did the one at 9. Take half of it, I'd be at 4.5. I mean, really, it's not a problem. You could do it if you want to, but uh, you, you could do the next one because 4 squared equals 16. So I'd have a dot at 16 up here, and when I took half of it, when I scale it, I'd be at 8. And that's a little bit better. So let's see. Uh, uh, that one. So, no. That one. There we go. I'd be at 8. And now, uh, that's the half of it. Remove it. 1, 2, 3, and down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I lost count. There it is. And then reflect it across the axis of symmetry, and that's definitely enough points in order to make a graph. There's your parabola, and it, look, it looks marvelous, gorgeous, perfect. It's a perfect looking parabola. So here's one for you to try. Exercise four, there's your quadratic equation. Hopefully you have yourself some graph paper because you probably graphed the other one with me, right? Um, graph that one, come back and see me and see if you graphed it properly. All right, so whenever you went to graph this thing, maybe you listed yourself out the vertex and your SRT transformations. Vertex is at negative 2, 3. It's at negative 2 because this is the opposite sign right there. Went to 2. Not scaling it because there's it's an understood 1 that's in front of that. I am reflecting it because it's a negative, and I'm moving it left 2 and up three point by point from the parent function so of course you'd want to throw that on there okay so point by point whenever i take this i'm going to reflect the origin across the i don't have to scale it and just go to a reflection reflect across the x-axis up done now move it left one two and up one two three oh whoops there we go i forgot to put the dotted line Anyway, that's the same vertex coordinate that we just came up with. All right, next one, let's do 1, 1. So reflect it across. It's going to be down here at 1, negative 1. And now move it left 1, 2, and up 1, 2, 3. It should be right here. And then I can reflect that across the axis of symmetry. All right, and then uh, how about this next point here? It's at 4, reflect it across. It's going to be at negative 4. And then left one, two, it's on the y axis, and up one, two, three. Hey, there's our y intercept, and then reflect that across right over here. That should be enough to make a graph. Why don't you go ahead and make your, or put another point on there if you wanted to? Go ahead and make a graph. And uh, there it is, it looks nice. Now, notice though, notice this, that after you found yourself the vertex, which you could have done on this one, 
because it's the same exact width as the parent function is just recreate the parent function just going downwards using this as your new vertex like the origin point you could do that as well let me uh, backtrack here for a second because I don't think this this video is quite long enough um, yeah let's backtrack it here and uh, something that we didn't do is find the x-intercepts and I want to do this to show you it's just when it's in this form it's so easy to find so uh, mm, uh, x intercepts happen when y is equal to zero. So if I just put that in there, let's put x intercepts right here, and stick zero in for y. Zero equals half times x minus three squared minus five. And now solve this thing for x. Don't go expanding that thing out because you're just going to make it harder on yourself. Get rid of the five by adding it over. So 5 equals a half times x minus 3 squared. Get rid of the 2 by multiplying both sides by 2 times this ball by 2. So I have 10 equals x minus 3 squared. Now take the square root. Plus or minus the square root of 10 equals x minus 3. And then finally add the 3 over and if you want to switch sides, because I do want to, x is equal to uh, 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 positive 3, plus or minus the square root of 10. So there are two x-intercepts. Didn't have to worry about the quadratic formula, didn't worry about ha having to factor it or anything like that, because it was very simple to solve whenever it's in vertex form. Whenever I put this up here, those are the two values that I can see where it's going to touch the x-axis. Yeah? Yeah. So going back to the one that you did, do the exact same thing for me. Find your x-intercepts. Pause it. Find them. Come back. Let's see if you did it right. And you're back. Are these the x-intercepts that you got? Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. So uh, whenever I set this equal to 0, I want to point something out here. Since the x plus 2, all of that quantity squared was negative, just treated that as one term and I got that to the other side to keep both sides um, positive. Sometimes you can't avoid it because you might have imaginary imaginary zeros which means you have no x-intercepts at all. Okay, well, for real this time. See you in the next video when we start talking about uh, intercept form.